my name is Scott Ainsley, and I have a, a homemade cigar box guitar. Um, this one is uh, made by Ashton Cigars. <laughs> They're supposed to be good cigars. I don't know. I can store things in it. Very handy. And the neck of mine is actually a pool cue, so I can take it apart and fly with it. It's a modern adaptation. And um, it must be said that cigars are bad for you, but cigar boxes are good. It's a conundrum. Now, I learned about these instruments from older black players in North Carolina, uh, mostly men born between 1900 and 1930, who I got to in the late, late 1980s and ni early 90s. And um, when I asked these guys, you know, what did you play first when you were a kid? Many of them, I thought they might have played a mandolin or fiddle or harmonica um, or guitar. And um, nine out of ten of these guys said they played a cigar box guitar. And I started asking questions about them. I'd never seen the instrument before or heard of them. And they said, you, you know, basically take a cigar box, you drill a hole in one side, and you run a stick through it, often a mop handle or a broken broom handle. And you take the wire off the bottom of the broom and throw the straw away. That's the best string on the farm, that wire that wraps the, uh, the straw at the bottom of a store-bought broom because it's thin and it has a high tensile strength. So it doesn't keep stretching. Fencing wire will stretch forever, as anybody who's put up a wire fence will know. Um, so you take that wire off the broom and you use the broomstick and your mother comes home and finds a pile of straw in the front yard and grabs a piece of fire hood and comes looking for you because you've torn up one of her store-bought brooms. So, uh, but the old guy said, they'll only beat you once. You know, the first time you play it, it's going to hurt. And then after that, they're not going to beat you the next time you play it. So the first playing is painful and after that, it's yours. So you have to wreck something to have something in their world. Um, now I'd never learned, I'd never heard one played when I started learning to play one. So what I do with these is to set up a, a rhythm. I play down with my thumb and up with my fingers. I wear finger picks because that's how I play guitar. And, um, just set up a rhythm and a drone on an open string that I want to play and the key in which I want to play. And then I also pluck it with my left hand in a slightly different rhythm, but they're, they're related. So you have one rhythm in the right hand and one left and you get so part of this is stopping the noise and part of it's double plucking the string percussive, multiple rhythmed sort of thing. And then you use a slide to... Now, on mine, I've marked little indentations and taking a big pen, very high tech, to color them so that I can see where the octave is when you divide a string in half. When you divide a string length in thirds, the vibrating length in thirds, you get the fifth note of the scale. When you divide it in quarters, you get the fourth note of the scale. And then I've gone back and by ear marked the flat third, and the flat seventh of the scale. And I've got the flat third up here above as well. So what I have marked out on here is for playing blues, and it's a minor pentatonic scale, which is a scale that comes out of Africa. Biscuit roller gone. 
names across the Black South. They're called Jitterbugs in Mississippi, probably named after the dance, not the other way around, or a Pictar, a one string, a cigar box guitar. In Georgia, they go by a very special name handed to me by a 70-year-old guy after a performance there. An old black man came down after a performance and shook my hand and wouldn't let go. And after a long period of shaking hands and me talking, uh, he finally just, finally just stand there holding hands with him and, and uh, waiting for what was going to happen next. And he said, we didn't call him one strings down here. He knew this instrument from his own experience. I said, what'd you call him? I'm collecting names for these. And he says, we call him a diddly bow. Diddly bow. And I'm like, oh man, thanks. And he shook my hand really hard and he said, get it right. He didn't have to say white boy. I knew that part. So putting the sound equipment in the car that night, I thought, wait a minute, Georgia, diddly bow. Turn the two words around, you get Bo Diddley, who a few years later admitted in Rolling Stone that, of course, his name, he was named after the instrument, you know, Bo Diddley. Didn't you white people know that? Anyway, very funny. Um, so when you take the rhythms that Chuck Berry and, and Bo Diddley were playing, they come very readily off instruments like this. And sometimes these instruments were built on the sides of houses with great long pieces of fencing wire very, very low notes. So you take these rhythms and transpose them down a couple of octaves and you get... It's like... Da, 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 da. And there's a guy in Florida who had a portable uh, house-sized diddly bow. He took a hollow core door with him to the party because it's rude to pound nails in the house of your host. So rather than rig one up there, he just his solution was a hollow core door. Very cool stuff. But when you take those rhythms and then you throw a little rock and roll into it, you get... Bo diddly, bo diddly, where you been? Round the corner and back. Up. And this is where this muting here becomes really important because it just stops the note and throws all the energy up in the air. And a rattlesnake for a necktie. Rock and roll starts right here. So this is one of the Ships of the Sea Diddly Bows, very, very, very famous cigar box guitar. And um, these are the kinds of instruments that, uh, that Tony's been building with uh, adult participants and with kids. Um, it has a, looks like a carriage bolt uh, for a bridge. And it's got three strings. You're halfway to having a guitar. And he's actually cut it so you could fret this thing. And we've tuned it sort of like a dulcimer. It's a, it's a G, D, G tuning. And um, I'm fairly new to this, but...
So you're really like very close to rock and roll. I can't get the rolling and tumbling blues out of my head. Give me a second. <laughs> This morning, feel around for my shoes. Know by that I got these oh, walking blues. Up this morning, feel around all for my shoes. Well, you know by that I got these oh, oh walking blues. Keep your land trimmed and burning, your land trimmed and burning, your land trimmed and burning. See what the Lord has done, sister. Don't get worried, you don't get worried, you don't get worried. See what the Lord has done. Ain't gonna tell nobody, gonna tell nobody, gonna tell nobody what the Lord has done for me. Keep your land. Trending, your land, trending, your land, trending, well, you see what the Lord has done.